Part two, polyprotic acids are really coming out to an excuse to practice that ice chart. Polyprotic acids have more than one proton they're willing to give up. Poly, more than one. But each one has a different value for Ka. And what you're normally going to see is that the first one has a really bigger Ka than really smaller Ka for the second. In other words, you've got one proton that wants to go and a fairly high Ka value that goes with it. We're talking fairly high, like 10 to the negative 4. And the other one has a much smaller Ka value, meaning that it doesn't come off as much. When you're calculating the pH for this, ignore the second one if it's much lower than the first. So normally, you're going to see a high Ka and then a low Ka, at least in comparison to each other. So in this example for ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, first Ka, 7.9 times 10 to the negative fourth. Second one, 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative twelfth. Nah. This, what, what this tells us is that the majority of the pH change comes from losing the first proton, and honestly, that second one, mm, not so much. Kind of like ignore X. We can say it's such a small fraction, it won't change it that much. So what we do is we write the dissociation for the first Ka. So that means I'm going to get a hydrogen ion, one of them coming off Hc6H6O6 minus, it's written down in your packet, way neater than that, and on the bottom I'll have the undissociated ascorbic acid. That was easy. And this is the Ka value I'm using, the one for the first one. So what do I do? What I always do, ice chart. I've got this acid breaking down into hydrogen and Hc6H6O6 minus. Cool. What is it? Point, oh, I guess I should shift that down one more. There we go. Point one zero molar acid to start with, no hydrogen, and none of the ion, because it hasn't dissociated yet. So let's change. I'm going to lose some of the unionized, and I'm going to make ionized. This is the same thing we did before. This is walking through another example of what we just did, because we're only using one ionization value. So 0 0.10 minus x, with x in the other two places. So, can I ignore x? Well, if I divide 0.1 divided by 7.9 times 10 to the negative fourth, I get 126, which says no. But, there's another rule that you can go to here. And if you look and the Ka and the concentration, we can compare those as well. There's another rule that says if Ka is less than 100 times, or sorry, if your concentration is less than 100 times Ka, you can ignore it too. So if I enter this in a calculator, I get 7.9 times 10 to the negative 2 if I multiply it by 100. That's 0 0.079, and that's still less than that. So I can ignore it. It's coming up that we're ignoring it fairly often, which is fine with me. So let's look here and just add in our numbers up here. I'm going to be looking again, x and x. And I'll be looking down here at point one zero. I just threw them in my Ka equation up here. So my Ka value is going to be 7.9 times 10 to the negative fourth. Remember, that's a measure of how strong an acid is. Once I've got my ice chart set up, as well as that, I calculate my value for x. Yes, there's a large Ka. I'm ignoring this. And I'm still solving for x getting x equals, and make sure you can do this on your calculator, 0 0.0281, and remember, that's my concentration 
of hydrogen. Negative log of this, 1.55. And that's my pH from this equation. Yes, there are going to be sometimes you can't ignore x, but for the examples I've given you so far, you can. I'll let you guys know in the practice problems if there are any where you can't. So that's my full deal. You need both videos today. Two separate examples in what to do with a monoprotic weak acid and a polyprotic weak acid. So there you go.